Hi friends, uh, Lori from Queen Mecca College. We are still reading Same Sun here. So right now we are on page 114. Page 114. There's a bicycle on page 114. Um, this says Deer River. So we know if it says Deer River, we know that Mina is writing it. That's why I have an M at the top of my page. You should have an M at the top of your page also. And please take notes in your book while you're reading. I want to see you writing in your book. Write in English. Write questions. Write things that you think are important. Underline things. Write definitions of the new words. So page 114, November 21st, 2008. Dear River, when I got back from school today, there were all kinds of things lined up in front of our building. Furniture and boxes and lamps and Kiku's bicycle with the sign stuck to the handlebars, please take. It's lucky I came home when I did because a man was just about to wheel the bike away. I told him he couldn't have it. And I dragged it all the way up five flights of stairs by myself. I had to take my backpack off and rest on the landings. It was really hard, but I did it. What happened is that the building manager told the super to take everyone's stuff out of storage in the basement and put it on the sidewalks as if it were trash. He said, if any of the renters want to store their things, they will have to pay $50 a month. That is $600 a year. We cannot afford that. Mrs. Lau says, this has never happened before. Storage has always been free. This is just another way to scare rent controlled tenants. Her son's high chair from when he was a baby was taken off the street before we could get it. It was something her husband had made by hand many years ago. Mrs. Lau is very upset and says one day we will all be pushing shopping carts on Canal Street and begging for food. So pushing shopping carts is like being a homeless person, right? All your things are in the shopping cart. When Kiku got home, he hammered some big nails into the wall behind the couch and lifted his bike up there so it would be out of the way. For saving his bike, he made me a peanut butter sandwich cut into the shape of a heart. It was tasty. There's something I have to tell you. I haven't told you before only because it's not just my secret, but it's my family's secret and Mrs. Lau and her family's too. We are living in our apartment illegally. Only Mrs. Lau's son is allowed to live here because it is his father's name on the lease. But Mrs. Lau's son lives in Brooklyn and we live here in his apartment. Mrs. Lau doesn't charge us one penny more than the rent controlled amount. She does not make any profit. She said it is enough for her to have people next door who will help an old lady when she needs it and walk her dog. We were going to move out to Queens and get a legal apartment, but then mommy and daddy had to spend all our savings on a plane ticket to bring me to America. It is very hard to keep a secret like this. It makes me feel like a liar and a cheat. And we are always sneaking around and always afraid of being caught. Mummy, Daddy, Kiku, and Mrs. Lau say, if there's another way, we would do it. They say we are not hurting anyone. And as soon as we can change the situation, we will. I was so scared when I saw Kiku's bike out there today. No one can know that we live here. Once every three months, there is an inspection in our building. And on that day, we take all our photographs down and put up pictures of Mrs. Lau's son and his family. We roll up the peacock bedspread and lay down a Chinese brocade sheet. 
we hide our spices and borrow some of Mrs. Lau's to stack above the stove. We pack up all our clothes and put them in the trunk of Uncle Sushil Uncle's cab. And when he drives off, we go to the White Lotus Chinese restaurant and drink a lot of tea until Mrs. Lau calls Kiku on his cell phone and tells him it is safe to come back. So they pretend they don't live there. They pretend a Chinese family lives there. So they have Chinese decorations and Chinese spices and Chinese photographs. Sometimes I dream at night about people breaking down our door and throwing us out the window into the street. I always wake up before any of us hits the pavement and I always wake up crying. So this is another problem that Mina has. She's living in this apartment illegally. It's very stressful for Mina. Page 117. Once this summer, the building manager saw me sitting on the stoop with Mrs. Lau and he asked who I was. She said I was a little girl who helped her with the laundry and groceries. When he asked me where I live, I got nervous and said next door. Mrs. Lau said I didn't speak much English and had gotten confused and that I live on Delancey. He asked about her son and she said he was doing business in Hong Kong for two months. Mrs. Lau said she thought he believed her, but I don't know. He kept staring at me. It will be all my fault if we lose our apartments. I should have been able to lie for my family. I hope you still want to be my best friend. I wanted to tell you the truth all along, but I wasn't sure if it was something you wanted to hear. It seems like there are some things you don't wanna hear. For example, I'm sorry I freaked you out about shaving my legs. I would think it was very interesting if you told me about shaving your face. Since I don't shave my face, it would be my chance to find out more about it. Anyway, I won't tell you about that stuff anymore since it makes you nervous, have a nervous breakdown. But I just have to say that you reacted the way mommy daddy would react. Like, because I'm a girl and you're a boy, we can't talk about certain things. Well, I think that's stupid and babyish. Also, if I'm being my true self with you, well, I'm a girl. So you may have to hear some girly things. And I don't understand why boys are always talking about their gas and their poop and all kinds of gross things. But if a girl says something about her body, a boy gets freaked out. Maybe it's just certain boys who are that way. We both love the mountains. So I figure you'll know what I mean when I say that mountains have different moods. You know, the city feels like it has moods to me too. Sometimes the whole city feels happy or sad or tired or silly or angry. Lately, it feels nervous. Sushil uncle says people are not taking cabs these days. Mom says three nannies, three of the other nannies she sits with at Central Park have gotten fired. And I heard a man on the news say that only people who do well, the only people who do well in hard times are undertakers. Undertakers are the people that work at the mortuary with the dead people. How is your daddy doing with his job? I did not get a letter from daddy last week. Kiku says sometimes mail is slow or it gets lost, but I feel worried. I am wearing my watch uh, set to India time today. It makes me feel closer to daddy. And I need to know what time it is here. I just subtract 10 and a half hours. Sometimes I try to send daddy messages in my mind. I think it's called telepathy. I don't know if you believe in stuff like that, but I feel like if I concentrate very hard, daddy can hear me. Do you think that's possible? What your mama said about not busting anyone's mouth, we call that ashima in India. It means non-violence. And it was how Gahinji got rid of the British. 
One time I tried Ashima when Kiku sat on me to make me promise not to tell mom he had been out with Anna Maria. I didn't bite him or push him or scream. I stayed very still. I stayed still with my eyes closed and said very quietly, you're hurting me. Please get off. I didn't move at all. I let him sit on me and yell. After a few minutes, he stopped shouting. He stood up and he said he was sorry and gave me a big hug. It was really weird how it worked. Maybe your mama has to get arrested so Mark can have clean water and Town Mountain can stay a mountain. It sounds scary, but maybe something good would come of it. Gahinji got arrested many times and he intended to, like your mama. If he hadn't done that, India would not be a free country today. If you come to New York City, I will take you to see the statue of Gahinji in Gandhi in Union Square. Whenever I look at it, I think how mom says Gandhi was a great man with a very lonely wife. She says, think of all the people she has to share him with, the whole country, the whole world. There was nothing left for her and the children. We have to share daddy with a catering hall but he is there working for us, so it is different. I think, I don't know, maybe it isn't. Maybe Gandhi did what he did for his wife and children too. So there's a statue of Gandhi in New York City. Oh, I forgot to tell you that Valentina got the part of Maggie and Marvel Jenkins is Diana with a solo. Every day after school, I have been painting a New York skyline backdrop for the closing number of a chorus line, a song called One. I have learned all kinds of new words in theater language, such as lower the fly and in the wings. And I know where downstage left is because I am always making little X's with masking tape there so the actors know where to stand. I really like drama club. I like the lights and the big red curtain and the way everyone works together. I like how one minute people are laughing and then all of a sudden they are crying and it isn't crazy. It's just the way they feel. Most of all, I like the singing and the dancing. I think Amir Khan should do a Bollywood version of a chorus line. It would be very good. You know how Marvel Jenkins is so strong, she scares me. I've been watching her during rehearsal and I've noticed that she takes her shoes off and that she sits down when she talks to boys. I think she feels bad about being tall the same way I feel bad about being short. I didn't think there was anything in the world Marv Marvel Jenkins felt bad about. Now that I know there is, I don't feel scared of her anymore. Lucky you with no school on election day. I'm glad you stared down that mean man who shouted at your mama. A lot of schools in New York stayed open on election day, like mine. We even had a test in history. Our teacher told us there are only five states where all the schools are closed, and Kentucky is one of them. My school, PS20, was one of the voting stations in our neighborhood. So our class gym classes were canceled and the whole gym was taken over by people standing in a long line so they could vote. I peeked in and I saw the machines with the big levers and the secret blue curtains. I saw a lady in a waitress uniform standing in front of a cop, standing in front of a man in a business suit, standing in front of a girl wearing hot pink rollerblades. Every time the line moved, she moved she rolled forward. Some people were serious and some people seemed giddy. It felt like something special and important was going on, right? Voting is special and important. That night, Mum and Kiku and I watched the TV at Mrs. Lau's. We all squeezed the couch and Cuba, we all squeezed on the couch and Cuba stretched out at our feet. 
he could wear his Obama t-shirt and booed every time McCain won a state. He really wishes he were already a citizen and already 18 so he could vote. I felt so nervous watching all the numbers and commentary and the US map filling in with blues and reds. It was weird to see New York blue and Kentucky red, like you and I should be enemies or something. And then when it was announced that Obama had won, I could feel it all through the air. It was sizzly, like thunderstorm air. And Kiku jumped up and pumped his fist and said, yes. Actually, it seemed like everyone in the city started screaming all at once. We could hear people yelling in the building and out on the street. Everyone was honking their horns, beep, 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 beep. And the lady who lives below us shouted, hallelujah, and started banging the pots and pans together. And when I went out on the fire escape, there were lots of people running up and down chanting, Obama, and strangers hugging and slapping high five. I wrote Dottie a letter to let her know. She and most everyone in Missouri will also be happy. Kiku says there are Republicans in the city, but I didn't see or hear anybody saying mean things about Obama on our block. Mom cried during Obama's speech. She said he was a decent man. And she said it was the first time she had ever heard a United States president mention Hindus. She smacked the couch and said, it's a good country. It is a good place to be. Kiku stretched his arms above his head and said, Mimi, this is, this night is something we would always remember. I asked Kiku about the White Stripes, the band that River told Mina about, and he played that Blue Orchid song for me. It made me jump up and down. Every morning before school, Kiku plays ACDC when he gets dressed and puts gel in his hair. He headbangs all over the place, and makes me and mom laugh. Sometimes he plays MIA. She is my favorite. Have you heard of her? I like the Beatles, Beatles too, especially that song with all the violins and lonely people. Which one is your favorite? He who told me to tell you that if you like the white stripes, you should check out the clash. He says they're really old school. It's so cold in here that it hurts to smile. The wind feels like hammers against my teeth. All the leaves on the pagoda trees have turned yellow and dropped to the sidewalk. I am getting excited for Thanksgiving. It is my favorite American holiday because I love cranberry sauce. I'm gonna sneeze. <laughs> oh my goodness, sorry. <laughs> Daddy has to work that whole weekend, so he won't be coming home, and that makes me sad. But Mrs. Lau and Cuba and Cece will come over and eat with us. In class today, Ms. Bledsoe told us to write up at least a list of 10 things we are thankful for. I wrote 14, and I could have kept on going, but the bell rang. Here is my list copied from my notebook. I am thankful for my hands and eyes. I am thankful for daddy and the way she loves me. I am thankful for mangoes. I am thankful I can do cartwheels. I am thankful for my brother and my parents who always make me laugh. I am thankful they have jobs. I am thankful Mrs. Lau's arthritis doesn't hurt today. I am thankful for mountains and trees and rain. I am thankful there was no pop quiz in science. I am thankful for my best friend, River Dean Justice. I am thankful for Musari and New York. I am thankful Cuba has silky ears that feel nice to pet. 
I am thankful for the book I am reading, Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. I am thankful for the F train, train that brings mom home every night. Those are nice things to be thankful for. Yesterday, I went with mom and Kiku to the free citizenship class at the library. Mom brushed my hair and braided it and tied a red ribbon around the end. Kiku put on some cologne that Anna Maria got him for his birthday. He told mom his boss had given it to him. Mom put her favorite salwar kameez, her dress. It's yellow with green flowers stitched all over. And whenever I look at it, I smell spring and garfal. The citizenship class was very interesting. It was held in the basement of the library where Mrs. Lau goes to learn English. They have a lot of books down there and tons of computers and everyone is nice. The lady teaching the class is named Mai. She said that ever since Obama won the election, the citizenship class has been full. Mai is American and Chinese. Her hair is very shiny and her skin looks like milk. Kiku kept saying things to try to make her laugh, but she cared more about teaching than boys. She had everyone in class say their name and where they were from. Myself, mom, and Kiku were the only Indians. Mostly, pe mostly people were Chinese and South American. There was one man from Ukraine who was wearing a gray suit that didn't have a single wrinkle in it. The teacher talked about how we shouldn't get too nervous about the test because that would make it harder to think. She says her parents um, had been naturalized 30 years ago and that the United States was a great country, one to be proud of. I don't have to take the test because I am under the age of 18. So once mommy, daddy are citizens, I can be one too. It's called derivative citizenship. There are a lot of big words that go along with becoming an American. But I'm still going to study for the test because I want to know how to be a good citizen. Mommy, daddy have to get their fingerprints done in two weeks, which is another part of the process. After the class, Mai answered questions. Kiku asked one about how to join the army so they will pay for your college. I do not want Kiku to be a soldier, but he says it might be the only way to get into MIT. There was one thing I learned I didn't like. I didn't know that to be an American citizen, you have to give up prior allegiances to other countries. Kiku defined that for me. It means that once you're an American, you can't be loyal to the country you come from. I don't know why I can't be loyal to India and America at the same time. Kiku says it's more complicated than that. But I don't know. It seems like that's what the words are saying. I am also worried that if the government finds out about our apartment, they will not let us be citizens. There's something on the paper Mai gave us about no perjury, which Kiku says means lying. We saw Mai leaving the library. She has an iPod. I told Kiku I wanted one too, and he pinched me really hard. When one mom went to the bathroom, he said that mommy, daddy can't afford to get us those. And if I wanted one, if I said I wanted one, it would make them feel bad. I hadn't thought of that before. I hope I didn't hurt mom's feelings. I should go finish my homework, but I want to tell you about one more thing. Something weird happened Monday night and I can't stop thinking about it. Mrs. Lau was at the senior center, senior center and I was sitting on our couch with Cuba watching the news. I pressed mute for the commercials like I always do and I heard the sound of a woman crying. I couldn't tell where she was because the sound was coming down the shaft way where three different buildings connect. I have never heard anyone cry like that before. It sounded like she was dying. Every time there was a commercial, I pressed mute, I heard her. She never stopped. 
it went on for uh, for a half hour. I kept looking at the clock. I was just about to call 911 and tell them someone was hurt when Mrs. Lau came home. I ran over and told her what was going on. She took off her coat and held it in her arms and listened to the woman. Then she shook her head and said, someone she loved betray her. Her heart feel like squash tomato. She sat on the couch and scratched Cuba's belly and talked to him in Cantonese. Isn't that a funny thing to say? She seemed so sure of what was wrong with the woman. I hope Mrs. Lau has not ever cried like that. I hope mom hasn't either. I am still afraid that woman died, but Mrs. Lau says she is positive that she is alive and walking around with a squashed tomato heart. I hope you are making good scrimmage and I hope you will start up soon. Happy, start up soon. Happy early Thanksgiving to you and your family. Sincerely yours, Mina. So that's it for today. Keep reading. Bye.